After 13 years, the giants of metal have returned Tool. The new album, Fear Inoculum, is out. We're going to discuss it. I'm going to try to keep the crazy fanboy in me at bay. Let's do this. What is up, guys? I usually don't do music-related content. As far as, like, reviews, I don't review albums and stuff like that, but... For Tool, I will make an exception because Tool is my favorite band. And plus, they haven't put out an album in 13 years. So I can't let this pass me by, right? For those of you that are new to my channel and you're here for the Tool review, I mostly do horror reviews. But I will say I am a dyed-in-the-wool Tool fanatic. I've been on board since Undertow. Uh, right after I got into Undertow, I picked up uh, Opiate. And uh, the rest is history. I mean, there's no band like Tool, uh, seriously, to this day. And I'm going to be talking about this in the review. They are a band that puts in the work. You know, they are perfectionists. They do not stop until they are 100% satisfied with their music. They market their music in a very different fashion than most bands because they have the product to back it up, you know? This is a quality band. As far as like musicianship goes, you might not like Tool, but you, you cannot deny the skills of, say, Danny Carey on drums, who is probably today the greatest drummer living. And after you listen to Fear Inoculum, you will understand why. Drummers, if you are not into Tool, but you want to hear great drumming, definitely check out this latest album. It's insane. Uh, I, I'm a drummer myself, and, and let me tell you, I, I was just floored. There's no way that this man could do all that with just four limbs. But... Uh, yeah, he does it. He's amazing. But I just got these in, and I wanted to show them off real quick. This is the Metal Hammer. Um, I ordered this one through the mail. And, uh, you know, I haven't, like, flipped through it yet or anything, but anything tool-related, because they're a band that they don't do interviews that often at all either, especially uh, everybody outside of Manor James Keenan. Uh, Adam Jones just did his first podcast recently, and it was a good listen. But then, of course, the Revolver Tool Magazine, too. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to diving into these. But we're going to talk about that album, Fear and Oculum. But first off, a couple shout-outs. One, uh, Toby Pucifer. I'm sure that's not his real name. Pucifer is another band that Maynard has. But uh, on Facebook, uh, he is a Tool fan like I am. And uh, I, I want to give him a shout-out. Because uh, we, we had a nice little discussion going on about the band. We were geeking. And, uh, of course, I said, hey, I'm going to give you a shout-out. So I give him a shout-out. And then also, uh, Troy Candy on Twitter. Uh, he is a massive Tool fan like myself. Every step of the way, I've, I've noticed he's, he's tagged me uh, with any kind of Tool news. Uh, when that album came out, he geeked out about it. I geeked out about it. And you, you geeked out about it if you're a Tool fan. But yeah, big shout out for Troy Candy too. Now, uh, first thing, 13 years. That's how long it's been. And ever since 2012, the band has hinted that new material was being recorded. Um, and, and every year since 2012, we were like, is this going to be the year? Is this going to be the year? And of, and of course, it never happened. And at one point, I had almost given up hope, even though I knew that uh, the, the record was being made. But this was a band that was so patient. They are the type of band that if they're not comfortable with it, they might not ever put it out. That's happened before Dr. Dre did the same thing. Also, I was scared of expectations. And I'm sure this band must have been like stressed out you know, to death because there were memes out about the new album, uh, and, and everybody was just like, if this thing comes out and it's just, you know, not that great, I mean, this, this is their fifth full-length studio album. This could be their last album based on their age. Hopefully not, because if you hear the album, you, you, you should know that they still got it. But luckily, the album is, it surpassed my expectations, if that's possible. I knew the capabilities of this band. I mean, Lateralis, my favorite album of all time. Anima is one of the most important rock albums of all time. There's a huge quantum leap between Undertow and Anima. This is when the band really came into their own and created their own style of music because with Undertow, they were being compared to whatever was popular at the time, Nirvana, and all those other bands. There's a lot of that type of music on that album too. Uh, they don't really start stretching the legs and showing off musically uh, until Anima. From that point on, they pulled away from every other band. They were their own style, genre of music. And after listening to Fear Inoculum, 
I would say most bands would not even attempt to try what they play. Just the musicianship of this band, every member is just a master at their craft. But more importantly, I mean, you could take a band like Dream Theater, who I used to be a massive fan of, but if you don't have like the heart and the, the message and all that behind the music, then what's the point of playing a thousand notes a minute? Tool gets that. You know, first and foremost, the message of the music is front and center. And then the musicianship is behind that. So a couple weeks ago, two weeks, three weeks, something, the first single came out. This was the first new music we heard in 13 years. It was a great song. Fear Inoculum is a song that I've listened to probably a hundred times by now, you know, because it was the only new material that I had up until they finally released the full album. And it was great. And, and I wore it out. And the song, you know, I still stand by what I said in that first reaction. You know, I recorded this like first reaction after listening to the album or the song two times. Had to record this moment. It's been 13 years since I've heard a brand new Tool song. I, I take that back. A brand new studio Tool song. I'm about to listen to Fear Inoculum, the title track, for the first time. Wow. It's still Tool. It's still a great song. I can tell you right now, it's probably my least favorite or my second least favorite on the whole album. And it's a great, great song. That should tell you how great the album Fear Inoculum is. And that shocks me because if, if I had an album where every song was at the same level as the title track, I would have said, great Tool album. You know, might not be the best album, but great Tool album. But no, every song outside of Fear Inoculum is like, here's Fear Inoculum. Every other song is like right here. My opinion, and we're going to get into some of those songs. I really gave you my opinion on the title track in that last video. If you want to watch that, you can go watch that. But I want to jump into the other songs. And by the way, every day I have a different favorite track. And there's six like full-length tracks on this album. Because every song is at least ten minutes long. But uh, Numa, this song really took me by storm. Uh, because it's... It definitely has that like track two feel to it. I think a lot of you know what I'm talking about with that. But it feels a little bit like Eulogy mixed with Schism. But it's definitely its own thing. And I love the, the whole the whole oneness, the message behind the song. Maynard's vocals. I think Maynard's vocals on this track are probably, probably my favorite. He really registers those highs better than he ever has in this album. But he doesn't really scream or get aggressive until Tempest, which we will get to Tempest, holy shit. But Numa has that really infectious, irresistible song structure throughout. You know, I think it's one of the catchiest songs on the album too. It's, it's the one that I definitely listen to probably the most at the moment. It's one of those tracks that as soon as it ends, you wanna start it again. It's just so good. Now next up, um, Descending and Invincible. These are the two tracks that I saw live at Rockville uh, and this was the first time they had ever played any new material. Um, I couldn't wait after hearing these two songs live to actually hear the studio versions because I had a feeling that I was going to appreciate them a lot more. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was amazing seeing the two songs live, but digesting it all uh, and, and hearing all the crowd like screaming around me and talking and, you know, smoking blunts. It, it's, it's tough to really get invested in the music, especially if it's brand new like that. Like, I could get into 46 and 2 all day. You know, I've seen Tool five times now live. But listening to these two songs in the album, uh, wow. Invincible is probably my favorite track of the album. This is like the big epic beast of a song. Um, you know, I could compare it, if, I, if I'm like comparing it to other albums, I would say Third Eye, like the song Third Eye off Anima. It kind of matches that in like epicness, but there's so many layers to this song. This song is probably the biggest like journey of the album. It's not really just a straight forward through the listener type of song. You know, it works around the listener. You're going to have so many different emotions when you're listening to this song. And uh, it's beautiful. It really is just a beautifully orchestrated song. And you can tell that so much work was put into this track. I can't believe I haven't mentioned Danny Carey's drumming yet, but yeah, his drumming all throughout this album, if I had to pick like a MVP, one MVP for this whole album, Danny Carey, hands down. His This is the best drumming I've ever heard him do, and he is, even before this album, my favorite drummer, the greatest drummer that ever lived in my mind. 
he topped himself on this album. I mean, the painstaking detail that you can totally hear, that is completely evident in every track on this album, that this god of a drummer puts into every song is so awe-inspiring, really, and inspirational. Uh, I didn't think that it was possible to create in this fashion. Sure, I've heard amazing drum drumming. Uh, you know, there I could count off five different drummers that are probably technically at Danny Carey's level, but there's something different about Danny Carey's drumming that separates him from every other drummer. Uh, there's a little bit more emotion in his drumming, a little bit more feel in his drumming, because a lot of times throughout these journeys, and that's what these songs are, journeys, you can tell that there's an emotional impact that's that's happening to Danny Carey as he's playing. I was just listening to a podcast with him, and he was talking about how live he probably could, wouldn't even play the same thing that he played on the album, especially, especially his like drum solo that he did for Chocolate Chip Trip. But Descending... I think Descending goes very well with Invincible. Like those two tracks are great to listen to back to back. And Descending has a little bit more of a darker, more somber tone to it, but it's still just as epic. There's a section like in the last third of the song, you know, cause Tool, they'll, they'll do this big build up for like seven minutes and then they'll go into like this bridge or just like a completely different section of the song that sounds different. I call this like the John Carpenter section because there is some, some synth in the, the last act of this song that really gave me some strong John Carpenter vibes and uh, like I could hear descending like in a movie I really could especially like a horror movie and that, that's a big thing with Tool's music is most of it uh, you could see in a, uh, a movie you know you can tell that th this group when they make their songs they're thinking from like a cinematic standpoint Adam Jones was actually in Industrial Light and Magic before he got into Tool. So you can see how that influence uh, went through into his music. Even even uh, Maynard James Keenan worked in the film industry before this. Now, Calling Voices, I won't spend too much time on. To me, this, is, this might be my least favorite track, and it's still a great uh, song. I mean, to me, the, the, the least favorite Tool song on an album is still better than most rock out there, you know, uh, just from a musician standpoint. But this song is definitely the most straightforward. It's a, it's, it goes by really quick, even though I think it's close to 10 minutes. It does feel like it just flies right by. But uh, one thing I do like about Calling Voices is that like the first half of it is really just Maynard and Adam Jones. And then once Danny comes in, then it has more of like a straightforward rock feel to it. But it's a good track. It, I mean, there's no bad tracks on this album whatsoever. And then of course, lastly, Tempest. Wow. Adam Jones pulled a rabbit out of his hat that we haven't seen yet. You can hear the influence of like Ted Nugent in this. I mean, he really went balls out with his guitar playing on this track. And this is the one that I kept hearing through the grapevine that was going to be a, like this amazing 15 minute opus of a song, but just full on like metal up your ass type of music and that's really what this is i mean if you all you rock fans you know that are looking for that type of music on a tool album this song is going to satisfy you tenfold there is a four minute guitar solo in this song but again it's one of those songs that flies right by every song on this album it, for some reason it just goes by so quick because of the quality that's in every song you know it's not really that repetitive this is a band that takes their time though they they make their way through the music you know through the composition but you can see what they're doing and, and it because they're so great at it it goes by so quick but i can't stress how epic and how big tempest is you know it's a 15 minute song and this is the song for those that are looking for those maynard harsh vocals it does have some aggressive vocals in it. And I haven't really talked about Maynard singing too much on this album, but I will say the guy is a genius in terms of lyrics because he writes all the lyrics for their music. The guy has never written like a cheesy lyric, but also, you know, his composition, the way he uh, orchestrates his lyric patterns in the songs, I think is brilliant. And you're going to hear that a lot through this album, especially in like Numa and Tempest. Those two songs, I think... Maynard really added a lot that wasn't even needed, but he made the song so infectious. Like, if Maynard wasn't in Tool, I, I don't think people realize how important the guy is. First off, his lyrics. Like I said, he writes all the lyrics, but he's an amazing writer. 
And he really drives home the message of each song. Uh, and, you know, thinking back to like the song Lateralis, Maynard came up with that whole Fibonacci sequence in, in terms of his lyrical patterns. And it's brilliant. So uh, overall, guys, this, it's hard for me to say right now because I've listened to the album, the, the full thing, probably like a good four or five times. It's definitely at least my second favorite album, if not the best, uh, because time will tell. Lateralis is my favorite album of all time. But this album, I mean, it's quality. It is 100% all the way quality. I don't want to give you my definitive answer yet as, as far as it being my favorite, but man, it's great. It is a phenomenal album. Those that are new to Tool, I'd say this is a good album to jump on to as well. Now, it's big, but it's it's catchy. There's a lot of catchy music in this album. So, anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on this album in the comments. Looking forward to hearing them. Like I said, Tool is not for everyone, but to me, they are just such a gift. And uh, there's no other artists like them. And I think when you have artists like that, of course, you're not going to uh, please everyone. And I think that's almost a good thing. So... Anyway, guys, um, if you are into horror, definitely check out my channel. I mostly review horror movies, but uh, I also do like mainstream type stuff. So check it out. Also, check out my Facebook group, Killer Flicks, uh, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drum Drums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and spiral out.